Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak and welcome to this ACDC Ultimate tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how you can take a photo like this, apply a few adjustments and make it look something more like this. If you've yet to buy ACDC Ultimate and you would like to follow along with this tutorial, you can add in the description below. You will find a link to your free ACDC Ultimate trial. We are going to begin this edit with a crop. Now, the part of the photo that I like is that we've got this waterfall snaking in here from the top right hand corner and sort of presenting itself with a bit of a bang here in the middle. And I want to emphasize that. I also want to get rid of this sort of sludge here, uh, which doesn't really have any place on any kind of uh, photo. So I'm just simply going to tighten this up a little bit. I will also apply a lens profile. So here ACDC has plenty of lens profiles. In this case, it's a Nikon D750 with an 18 to 35 mil wide angle lens. And as I click that, you can see that it will sort of correct the distortion inherent with that particular lens. So having cropped our image and corrected for distortion, we are gonna go back to the tune tab. Now, overall, the image could be sort of sort of described as dark and our histogram shows that as well basically the image is all shadows except for the highlight here so we're going to go to the general tab and we're going to boost exposure and see that sort of histogram sort of balance out a little bit better now as we balance that out you can see that our waterfall here has truly clipped to white in most of the areas it just doesn't look any good anymore so the obvious thing we can do is sort of pull the highlights up and that will go a long way to fixing that issue. But since this is a tutorial, I wanted to show you sort of a, a more clever way of doing it. So we're going to go to the masking tab and we're going to select luminance range masking. Now, by default, it will pretty much mask the whole image. So what we do is we grab the sort of range here and as we do, you can sort of see that the whole image is masked. And as we sort of reduce the shadow range and bring it in, the only thing that's going to be left masked is the brightest parts of the image. Now this requires a little bit of sort of fooling around with until you've got it just right. Um, but getting it just right isn't too difficult, it just requires patience. And there we go, that is our waterfall mapped. And now the adjustments we apply henceforth are only going to apply to the waterfall. The rest of the image will stay as is. So we don't want to overdo it because that's what overdoing it looks like. But we're definitely going to just sort of take the edge off and bring the sort of overall highlights of this image back into, um, back into range of the image. So I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go about there. And if we sort of deactivate the mask, we can kind of see what it looked like before uh, versus what we look now. I think I can get a bit more off that too. Uh, yeah, we can get a bit more still. That's starting to look bad now. That'll do. So here uh, before, and after so that is luminance masking now so we're going to close the masking window and now we are going to light eq now with light eq left in its advanced mode so make sure you've got it switched in advanced we can sort of adjust brightness of specific areas of the photo so for example we can do that here by clicking on and dragging it up and we can sort of smooth out those mid tones a little bit or we can do it on the image itself. So for example, if we were interested in lifting the greens, we can just by clicking on the greens and then sort of pushing them up accordingly. Next is the color wheel. Now I adore the color wheel. Again, really easy to use uh, once you know how. So we take our sort of sample dropper, we highlight the color we want to affect, which is the green in this case. And doing so means that the whole green parts of the image within this range are masked. And we can alter the range of the masking just sort of by dragging this sort of circle here. Now, this is largely a green image, so it's a pretty straightforward masking. And now with it masked, I am going to change the hue. We can go extremely creative here. 
so we can get some really crazy results sort of Pandora style. But what we're going to do is go for kind of an autumny look. So I'm going to change the sort of evergreen leaves into something a bit uh, more like autumn. Now that's a little bit much. So I'm going to do a little bit of desaturation so I can go full black and white if I want to, but I'm just going to take the edge off. You can go the other way, of course, but let's go a bit muted. And I can also boost the contrast within these particular tones. So I can go extremely contrasty. I can flatten the image, but a little extra contrast will be just right. And perhaps a little bit of brightness as well. Next, we've got tone curves. Now this image has already got plenty of contrast. I'm not sure we need a curve at all, but I'm gonna just sort of try anyway. So I'm gonna crunch those shadows up a little bit. And I'm also just going to provide the ever so slight boost to the sort of mid-tones to highlights. Nothing too killer. I'm going to reduce the whites a bit, see what it looks like. Uh, no, I'm going to leave it as is. Now, top tip for you guys, for tone curves and most of the other adjustments, we can create presets. So not a preset based on the sum of our entire edit, but a preset specifically for this adjustment. So if we go to the cog option, we can go to save presets, give it a name such as curve, click OK, and now that preset will be available forevermore. So this is a great feature if you find yourself making the same adjustments over and over. Another nice tool is the soft focus. Now, I'm not sure I'm going to use much of this on this image, but if I dial it up to max, you can get some really nice effects with this. Uh, sort of ethereal would be the term. And people pay good money for lenses such as the Lens Baby to get these sort of results. Um, I paid good money for a Lens Baby, in fact. Um, it's a nice feature, and you can also use it subtly. You don't have to go crazy. And just by taking the edge off can make an image look a little bit less digital, uh, a little bit less perfect, and just give it some imperfection. After all, uh, there's nothing particularly lovable about perfection. You can respect perfection, but you can probably never love it. Anyway, before we get any deeper, we're going to go to the post crop vignette. Now, the post crop vignette, I really like these. Uh, despite paying lots of money for edge to edge bright and sharp lenses, um, I'm going to just digitally um, undermine all of that and create this vignette. So I'm going to put strength quite high, not too high. I don't want it to kind of obviously stand out that a vignette's being used. I'm going to shrink the radius a bit. So I'm closing in on that bright part of the image. And then I'm going to use the feathering tool now. So this is what no feathering looks like. And this is uh, going to ease the transition of the, the, the vignette and um, the image in the center. Now, some photo editing tools have a brightness option, which means you can independently control the sort of brightness of the center portion. Uh, that is a great sort of tool. And ACDC, if you're listening, I would really like something similar in uh, Ultimate 2026. Um, but yeah, that is the end of our edit. Now, if we look at the original, we can see here is what we started with and here is what we've ended with. Now, I hope you did find this tutorial useful. Uh, if you haven't tried ACDC Ultimate, you can. And in the link in the description below, there is a link to your free ACDC Ultimate trial. If you want to know more about Ultimate or photo editing applications in general, do stop by silentpeakphoto.com for my full Ultimate 2026, uh, 2025 review. I hope you found that useful. My name's Richard from Silent Peak. I wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.